I'm sorry, you guys. So my camera died. And um, so I just, I'm using my computer's camera, which is not as good and kind of blurry, but I wanted to make sure to get the story out because I just feel so inspired to share it today. And it's been so long. I've never really shared this story before. Um, but yeah, so I had like three weeks left and they started doing what they usually do. And they started saying, oh, like the Excel spreadsheets that you've created for us, we don't really like, we can't really use that. Mind you, they don't know what the, they didn't know what the Excel spreadsheet that they had created, that I had created. They didn't know what the Excel spreadsheet that I had created for them looked like or was. So the first two to three days that I was freaking out, I literally even called the meeting and I asked them if there was any way to maybe just go part-time or, you know, because we're in the middle of a pandemic, I think that's really what just freaked me out. So for those first three days, literally it was like just three days. And then on the fourth day, I was like, I was fine after that. It was so weird. And so the second day, I and then on Monday, called the meeting on Tuesday, I met up with them. So on Monday, I got all my ducks in a row as far as like the Excel spreadsheet, which I was very confident about. That Excel spreadsheet was a bomb, okay? It had like macros in it. It had all type of graphs in it, but they just hadn't seen it. And they hadn't asked to see it. So I didn't realize they wanted to see it, you know? And I was miserable there every day. So I wasn't really thinking like, oh, let me go show off in this. Like, And I'm just not, my mentality is not that of a worker's mentality. So I'm like, you don't ask to see it, that's on you. <laughs> you know, so I brought it in this time around and I showed it to them and they literally, it was like silence. They were like, well, we didn't know you had all this. And I was like, well, yeah, but no one ever asked. And the manager had been on vacation for the past two weeks because I had spent that whole time building it because they had just put me on that project and she came back. And the next thing you tell me, like the next day that she's back is that the role is going away. So obviously there hasn't really been any time in between there. They're like, well, we didn't know you had this and stuff like that. And then I was like, yeah, I didn't really realize and whatnot. And so they said, oh, it's actually pretty good. But they didn't act like they really were that into it, like super into it. They didn't act like they were so into it. It turns out that they wanted that Excel spreadsheet so bad. And I didn't even realize it because they were trying to play it cool for a while until they couldn't play it cool anymore because the time kept coming closer and closer to where it was time for me to leave. And that Excel spreadsheet had so much data that I had put together in one place to make it easier for them. And then it was like, different sheets that were, would translate the data into graphs. It was just, it was really nice. And I had taught myself how to do that, actually, because I didn't know how to do that before. I just taught myself how to do all of, well, I knew how to use Excel. I was pretty decent at it. But some things I included in there, uh, new features that I included in, in there, just because I felt like, oh, this will help, this will work, blah, blah and it looks good. So I, I taught myself how to use those new features. And so they acted like they were, they, they acted like they liked the spreadsheet, but it's not that big of a deal type of thing. You know, when someone's like, oh, that's cool. But in reality, they're really wanting that spreadsheet, <laughs> that they really want that thing from you. So, you know, a day goes by, a day or two goes by, and then my manager comes in and, and, and asks me, hey, that Excel sheet, can you send it to me? And I'm like, send it to you? I thought you didn't want it. That's what I told her. I said, what do you mean send it to you? I thought you guys didn't want it. I thought that you said that you would find another way to keep track of all of the, that data. Because no one, you guys, no one on that team was competent with, like they were all so, no, Excel, not with Excel, not with anything that, have to do with like data and keeping track of data. None of them. And they were all older too. 
So it wouldn't have really done them much good because I'm the one that created the Excel spreadsheet. But I guess they were going to try to find someone to keep up with the Excel spreadsheet, but they wouldn't have been able to. They, that, that, what I did was a full-time role it, on its own. And it wasn't even my primary role. They had added stuff to my primary role. And that was one of the things that they added. But that alone could have been its own full-time job. So they, they wouldn't have been able to keep up with it anyways. So she comes and asks me, hey, can you send it over, this and that? And I was like, okay. So I thought that was so weird. I was like, because I told her, I said, I thought you guys said you were going to just find a different way of using it and you didn't need my spreadsheet. She's like, no, like, you know, we just, so we can have the information and transitioning and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, okay, I'll try to find a way. I'm not sure if I still have it though. I put so much work into that thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what, those are my skills. That's my work. At the very least, you have, like, the com companies need to realize, like, that's what you pay us for. You don't pay us to come here and kiss your ass, you know? It's our skill set, but they get it confused all the time. And so I'm sure when they were cutting people off, they were thinking, like, oh, she doesn't really talk as much because I'm pretty introverted at work at the any eight to five because I just don't want to be be there I don't want to be talking to people I'm one of those people that I just want to do my job and go home and within HR it's almost impossible to be that way uh because they just won't let you live and I was like wow how strange like they had said that they they acted like they weren't interested in this sheet at all well you know like oh it wasn't a big deal and now that I'm about to like leave two three days after the meeting I guess they had they talked to each other and I could tell that they wanted that excel sheet so bad and I know they wanted it because I had spent enough time at that job to know what these people like and I built that sheet exactly like that but because they never gave me the opportunity to show it blah 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 blah, blah that's on them you know you snooze you lose and that, that's how I view it so you know, I tell them that and they were like, okay. And at this point, I still have about three weeks left or so. So I'm just kind of doing my thing, like waiting for the day to come. <laughs> we're just whiling away time, y'all. Like I'm just, every day that I go, it, it's becoming harder and harder to go in there because I don't want to go. After that third day, I was just like, I wish I could just sleep today and not have to go back there you know? And so uh, that week, it all happened so quickly. Within a week, you, uh, this, this all happened within the same week. So that was like on Wednesday when she was like, oh, this and that and whatnot. And like, can you send it to me and all that? And I was like, oh yeah, yeah sure. And so Thursday goes by. I I'm At this point, I'm just coming in doing the bare minimum, obviously, and going home. Because there's not much I can do. I'm leaving anyway. So there's really not much that I can help with as far as, like, things that would be just, oh, just do, you know, do this, do that. Because I was working on projects. So, so I come in, try to keep my head down because I know that it's almost time. And then I leave, I do, I do that on Thursday, do that on Friday, the weekend rolls around and Monday I'm dreading going in. And I'm like, why was I so concerned about this job going away again? Like I absolutely despise this job. <laughs> it was the pandemic. The pandemic is what scared me because it, there was a pandemic and, um, but that still shouldn't have scared me, but that's what did it. Otherwise I wouldn't have... Like, I, I don't think I would have reacted in that way. But but anyways, so Monday rolls around, Tuesday rolls around, and they come back into my office. Because at this point, I haven't sent anything, and I had no intention of sending anything. Why should I work that hard for something that you told me you didn't want? And so, like, so now you want me to, like, start looking everywhere, doing the most to send you something that you said that you didn't want. That's not my fault. You said you didn't want it. So 
Tuesday rolls around and here comes not even my manager, but my manager's manager, you guys, my manager's manager. <laughs> here he comes into my office and he looks at me and he goes like, so about that spreadsheet, do you have that spreadsheet? Um, can you like send it to, send it to us or send it to me? And he's being super nice. This is the first time, mind you, <laughs> You guys, this is the first time this man has ever stepped into my office, like ever, like, and for those of you that are wondering, no, I didn't have like a whole office to myself or anything. They literally put me in like a closet or something. It was, it was like a spare office that they put all their snacks in and stuff like that. And I guess they didn't have any space or any other space. So they just stuck me in there in the corner, <laughs> like a nobody, right? But, you know, I'm good at just, like, doing what I need to do as long as I know there's an end to it because, you know, I'm not going to be there that long or whatever. Um, but anyways, so that's what I mean by office. I have never once seen, seen this man come into my office area, ever. I had gone into his office once or twice because I was having issues with uh, uh, how I was being managed, essentially. I just felt like, I, I feel like the they were so, it, there was a lot that was wrong with that job from the time that I came into that job because I came in under a, under a particular manager and then that manager that I came in, let's just call that manager senior manager. And so the senior manager had a manager underneath her. And I came in, I came in under the senior manager. And when I came in, it was all good. On the second day, the senior manager calls me and the manager under her into the office. And then she just says, oh, okay, just from now on, you're actually going to be under under the manager, under the under this regular manager, right? And I'm thinking in my head, like, okay, at, at this point, I'm at a certain level career wise, and so to be underneath the senior manager is better for me career wise, and that's a, that was a huge part of me accepting the role. So for her to make that change was nuts, right? So she just said, oh, you know are you good with that? And I was like, okay, you know? So that was the first thing that happened. And I did not like that at all. And so I tried it for a few months. And I think that like, so this regular manager didn't have any body underneath her. So her management skills were non-existent, y'all, like non-existent management skills. Not only that, she spent all her time kissing the ass of the senior manager. And so she was always scared to make any decisions of her own. And um, so that was like a huge issue as well, because I wasn't really getting training. Every management meeting that we would have, the both of them would be in it. And it was like really weird because I was confused. Like, okay, who's the, my manager again? You know, it was a mess, a complete mess. And so um, anyways, and I think she was a little bit threatened by me just because I have a lot of letters behind my name, just from school, degrees, certifications and stuff. And at that, that point, she didn't. And here's the funny part. <laughs> I have, I'm a senior professional human resources uh person. Like I have a senior professional human resources certification and you have to have a number of years of experience and then take the board and all that stuff to get that. She didn't have any of that. Right. And while I was working there, she took the test for a professional in human resources, not a senior, just a professional. So there's different layers. There's the professional, there's the senior. And so she got the professional, but didn't get the senior. <laughs> So I'm like, how do you have a subordinate that is like, you, 
And then on top of that, you don't have any management experience. Chad, it was, it was crazy. So there were like a lot of things going on. So this whole time I had gone to his office twice. The, the This is the manner, this is the basically one of the VPs, right? Over, over the human resources department. So it's not like, but um, I had went to talk to him about that at least two times to tell him like, hey, I'm highly confused. I, you know, I'm not understanding what this is about. It turns out what it ended up being was that that senior manager and that the manager underneath her, they're really, really close friends. And so the senior manager really wanted to get the manager underneath her because the manager underneath her only had a title. She had no team. She wasn't the manager of anything or anyone. So she really wanted to get someone hired for the manager underneath her so that the manager underneath her could get some experience and stuff like that. And at the same time, the manager underneath her was doing nothing but kissing ass because she doesn't have a choice. And so that's really what was going on. So I just, I was the product of a, a political game, basically, that they were playing. And so um, anyways, I went you know, to his office twice, talked to him. And this whole time, I had never seen that man in my office, you guys. Never. Never seen him anywhere even close to where I was sitting. So he comes in the next, the following week. It was like on a Tuesday. He goes, hey, about that? spreadsheet closes the door it's weird I was like the hell is going on here <laughs> it was so crazy closes the door and everything and proceeds to ask about this spreadsheet like hey so about the spreadsheet do you have it can you send it blah 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 and I was like um no I haven't been able to locate it yet and I told the other manager as well, the senior manager, I told her that I don't have that anymore because they, you guys said you didn't want it. So I didn't think there was any reason to keep it. And so he goes, oh, well, from here forward, I just want you to focus all your energy on replicating that Excel sheet. We really need that Excel sheet. So now they're starting to come clean. They're so desperate, right? That they can't even help themselves. They're like, we really need that Excel sheet. We really, really need that Excel sheet. So anything else that you were doing before, that goes to the wayside. Don't even worry about doing any of that. Just focus on all your the time that you have left on replicating this Excel sheet because we really need that Excel sheet, the one that you built. Child. That's when it became clear to me just how desperate they were. But it's so silly because what you're desperate for are my skills, not the Excel spreadsheet. But they just wanted that spreadsheet because they had already pulled the plug on my position. And so that's all that they could get. So at least maybe they could show it to other people, get it replicated or something if they needed to. But that Excel spreadsheet was bomb. Bomb. So, anyways, so he says that, and I was like, "Oh, sure, okay, yeah, I can, I can do that." But I just, it took so long to create this free Excel sheet. I don't think that I'm gonna have enough time to replicate it, but I'll definitely do my best. So, setting expectations low. So, if it doesn't happen, they're not too surprised. If it does happen even better for them, I guess. It makes no difference for me. I'm leaving anyway. So what do I care? So anyways, so I was like, yeah, 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 sure. That's, that's fine. We can do that. And of course, I'm not doing that. Are you serious? Replicating that? That, that was a lot of work and coding. And in an, in coding on an intermediate level. No, it's not like, programming but nonetheless I was like there's no way I'm doing that when I only have like a little bit over two weeks to go so but I was just like yeah 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 sure 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 and so at that point you know I was like there's no way I'm just gonna write it out you know 
I, the next morning I started talking to the very next morning. So this was like a Wednesday morning, I think. I started talking to someone from a different department. It was more like the benefits payroll department. I started talking to someone from there and I was like, yeah, like, you know, I was telling them about the position being eliminated and like, you know, what I was going to do next because they were asking. And at that point, you guys, ah, I had already, while I was there, I had gotten my licensing, my board certification license, uh, counseling license. I had gotten nationally certified as a counselor and things like that. So I'd gotten all my ducks in a row while I was there and I already had that. And so in reality, I should have, the next step was for me to like leave that place and start working as a counselor so I could start getting my experience and living the way that I wanted to live. But I was so scared. It's crazy. They had to, they literally pushed me into my destiny. They pushed me right into my destiny. Um, I'm supposed to have been able to push myself, but I guess God saw that I wasn't doing that in use them to push me right into my destiny. So it was great. But I was talking to the benefits lady and she was saying like, yeah, cause you get, and we started talking about how many days you get, how many days you get off vacation days, things like that. Y'all five, five minutes into that conversation, it just clicked. I said, wait a second, I have enough days to where I can be off for my last week, for the full week of my last week. And I still have about, actually, I think I still, yeah, I still have, I still had a little bit over two weeks left. So I still had quite a bit of time. And I said, okay. Um, and, and, and at this point I hadn't accumulated that much time because I was like on my 10th month, 10th or 11th month, but I still had some time that I could use because I hadn't used all my time or all the time. So I said, wait a second, wait a second. So five minutes into that conversation, it clicked. And I was like, today is going to be my last day. It just clicked. And keep in mind, that morning, it was early in the morning, y'all. It was like, I used to get there at 7.30. My ship was 7.30 to like 4.30 or 5. So it, this was like around like 7.45. And when I was having the conversation with her, it was like around like 7.45. And like five minutes into the conversation, I was like, this is going to be my last day. Because that conversation had set my mind right. Like that, what am I still doing here? Are you kidding? I have off days that I can use and things like that. So, and keep in mind, I came in that morning, not thinking that that day was going to be my last day. I came in thinking, okay, another day off, just a few more days and I'll be out of here. I would have made it. Ciao. We started talking. I was like, today is going to be my last day. I went back into the office after that conversation and um, packed up all my stuff because I had already started packing my stuff. So I didn't have much left. And I was like, yep, this is the last of it. Packed up all my stuff. And I went and then um, I went, I walked over to the senior manager's office and I kind of peeked through. And she was on the phone. Her door was locked. She was on the phone. So this worked out even better than I thought it was going to work out. Because what I was going to do is I was going to tell her, hey, I don't feel too well, which I didn't. I was like, I don't, I was going to tell her, I don't feel too well. I think I have to go home. And remember, you guys, this is during COVID time. So I'm thinking I might have COVID. And I'm over here trying to power through this for what reason? You know, and it just clicked. Like, I don't have to power through this. Like, literally, I can make, I need to prioritize myself and prioritize my, my safety. This is nuts that I'm still doing this, but this is the control that they have over you or they want to have over you. And it just clicked, like, what are you doing? Prioritizing this place that you're not even going to be in for another month over your own health? No way. 
So I picked through, she was on the phone and her door was closed. So guess what I did? Guess what I did, you guys? I went back to my office, okay? Grabbed my stuff, because I had already packed it up. Grabbed my stuff, grabbed my bag, and walked right out. <laughs> I walked right out. right through the front doors, right to the elevator. So I passed everyone with my bag and everything, walked right out. And this was like at 8 a.m. in the morning. And on my phone, because at that time I had my work email on my phone. Can you imagine? Oh my God. Working for someone else is the worst. Your work email on your phone? Oh my gosh. Anyways, I had my work email on my phone, pulled it up, while I was like in the elevator going down and typed up like a short email to the senior manager and put the VP on there. And I said, hi, I wasn't feeling too well today. I went to your office to try to tell you that I, I think I'm going to have to go to the hospital, go get checked. Um, and I might not be able to come back today. Uh, but your door was closed. So just wanted to give you a heads up and let you know that that's what's happening and I had to leave and for for the day at least for 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 now because I have to go take care of myself so I sent that email girl and and I got in my car and as soon as I drove out of that garage was as soon as I drove out of the garage and the front of my car touched the sunlight that was the moment that I died and started living at the same time that was the moment that that was the moment for me so as soon as the front of my car came out of that garage and touched the first piece of sunlight that was the moment that I died in leaving that garage. I was reborn and I started living. I know it sounds crazy, cliche, whatever, but literally that was it. And that was the moment I started living and I was smiling the whole time. I couldn't believe the feeling of just freedom that I felt, the, just the feeling. I couldn't believe it. So that was the moment. That's when it happened. That's when I died and I actually started living. And from there, I I did that. I went to the doc I went to the doctor, got a test. I got the test. It take it at that point it was taking a while. And they don't let you go back into the office for 10 days um, while the test is pending. So guess what? I was at home for 10 days, and then I just used I, my off days, I'm still kind of like ill because I left, I actually left two off days on the table because I didn't think of this sooner. I didn't think to choose myself sooner. Otherwise I could have had two extra off days, but all in all, I think I did pretty well. Um, and so I was out for the two weeks for, for 10 days because I couldn't come back in because of the COVID. I had my doctor's note, which I emailed to them on that same day because they emailed me back and they were like, oh, send the doctor's notes and that they didn't believe me. I had my doctor's note, attached it. Here's my doctor's note. I'm going to have to be out on the uh, for 10 days. My doctor's note said that. I emailed it to them. Chat, turned on my TV. I turned on my TV. Oh, we, oh, we. And did I mention that I wasn't making any money? I was still having to work my side hustles super hard to cover my bills. And these people wanted me to do what? Turn on my TV. I was like, doctor's orders, sent it in. And at that point, you know, game over for them. There's nothing they can do. There's nothing they can do because I'm already leaving anyway. It's doctor's orders. The doctor's note is right there. The phone number is right there. If they want to call, I'm sure they probably did call and verify it. And at this point, I had already taken the rest of the days off up until 
the last day, my last, my last day. So I wasn't coming back. <laughs> and anyone that would go into the office space where I was sitting, it was completely empty because I had already packed all my stuff over the past like couple of days I had spent time packing stuff that I wanted as far as like office stuff and things like that. That was it. That was it, y'all. That was the moment that I died and started living. And ever since then, I haven't looked back, honestly. And I, not only have I not looked back, but I've transitioned into my career. The career that I had known that I wanted to do since my associate's degree, I've transitioned into it. I was so scared about that. I was scared I wasn't going to be able to find a job. It was new. And that's part of what freaked me out. Like, oh my gosh, am I really going to be able to use this license to work? I've never done this before. And I was home during the day. I got to see the sunlight. I got to schedule my own schedule the way that I wanted. And I'm still doing that till this day, obviously. And then I get and I get to give myself raises. I get to give myself raises. So come November, I get to add some things to my licensing, which will allow me to make even more. And that, that's not, I'm not going through yearly reviews or any of that nonsense. Like I don't have a, a manager that's going to get, uh, no. And that was the day. That was the day, y'all. I, I transitioned into what I've been working so hard for. And I started living in the way that I've been wanting to live for years and years and years. So that's my story. And um, yeah, I've been doing that now, coming up on a year, a year of freedom, you know. And I work even harder than I probably worked it, you know, in corporate, just because I'm more passionate about it. And it's what I love to do because it's been hard still, but I've been so free. Like I, it just feels different. It hits different. It hits different. And so, um, it, it's been great. You guys, I got to tell you, follow your dreams and never stop because even though I am where I am now, I still have so many more things that I want to do in my life and so many more dreams I'm just at a place where I'm finally happy and I can breathe and I'm, I, I, can fi I finally feel like I'm living. I'm living my, my, my own life. And it was a long journey. It was a long journey to get here. Took a lot of abuse in the corporate world, a lot of abuse. And I'm finally here. So I'm super happy. Can't wait till November, you know? And this year is when I decided I've always wanted to do this YouTube thing. When I was getting my bachelor's and doing eBay, I literally bought a bunch of like recording equipment, expensive stuff. Y'all look at this. Expensive recording equipment. Like this come this has so many other parts to it too. I got the stand, I got the tripod, and I got all those things because I wanted to do YouTube. That that literally was seven, eight years ago. And I never even opened a YouTube account until 2018. But I had already bought the equipment and stuff because I wanted to do YouTube. And I always wanted to do YouTube. And <laughs> it's just funny. Like, I've been, I've been doing everything to as far as planning and getting ready to do YouTube, but never actually executed on it. Isn't that insane? I have a tripod. I have this, I have different parts to this camera, to these lenses, to y'all, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, like, don't let them forget your, don't let them let you forget what your dreams are. Do not let, do not become one of those empty shells that goes in and out of the office every day, just don't. So that's one thing that I got right during my 20s is I always knew that I didn't want to work with someone else's dreams. I didn't want to use my life for that. So um, this year I decided, hey, I'm, you know, because I started it, I started my channel in 2018. I stuck with it for a, a, like a month and a half. 
I got monetized and everything during that time. And then I fell off again because the corporate life and stuff. So this year is finally when I was like, oh, okay, I'm getting back on my my long-term goal and um, dream of, you know, making this YouTube thing work and sharing and building a community of friends and almost like an online family and actually using the things that <laughs> I purchased towards, towards that goal so many years ago. And I'm just so happy, so, so happy. Um, so that was this year and here I am doing what I love, you know, and I'm actually, I, you know, by the end of this year, I won't have, because I had taken out that loan. Remember I told you guys, I won't have any loans that will be totally paid off. I won't have any bills except for my rent. <laughs> so that's what I'm working on now. So by the end of this year, I won't have any bills except for my rent. I'm doing my PhD. I enrolled in my PhD immediately after getting my master's. So guess what? Because I did that next year, I'm scheduled to be done with my PhD next year. So dissertation is next year. And after that, that's it. I'm done. I'm done, y'all. Done with, with school and everything. And it's just crazy. And next year, I'm getting into real estate investment because I haven't purchased my home yet. So what I'm going to do is instead of going that route, I'm going to get into real estate investment. I'm going to, uh, I've already started shopping for my first two properties and researching and things like that. So next year I can start, hopefully start the process because the market is so, I was going to start this year, but the market is so crazy that I got to try to wait a little bit to see, to see if it stabilizes at all. But yeah, that's where we're at. Isn't that unbelievable? Isn't that unbelievable, y'all? So don't ever give up. Don't ever give up. Just keep fighting, keep dreaming. I'm a small, small YouTuber right now, but I can see it. I have that vision. I can see it, my YouTube channel growing. I know it will. And I want it to grow with like-minded people. Like, you know, and it's already growing. I'm so grateful for where I'm at right now with, with YouTube and in this, the following that I have. So you guys keep, keep, keep on dreaming. Do not let them take that away from you. All right. This video has been so much longer than I expected. I'm probably going to look back on it and say, Hey, I need to update a video. Cause I love telling my story because I feel like it can really help encourage people. It really, I really do feel that way. And I'm not by any means done. And I have such a long way to go. The difference is that now I'm living I'm finally living. All right. Thank you guys so much for joining me today and listening to my story. Love you. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.